Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and today we're taking a look at some of the great new features in After Effects CS5. You've probably already heard the buzz about RotoBrush, a great tool for extracting. Now, when most people hear Roto, they think of tedious, boring, hard jobs that they don't want to tackle. And that's because Roto is usually a lot of work to rotoscope something out. But After Effects has a great tool that could shave significant time off the process and opens up new opportunities for using rotoscoping. Here's how it works. You go ahead and double click the footage to load it so you're viewing just that footage here in the window. And then you'll see up top here that you have a roto brush. Now you want to go ahead and start to drag over the image. And as you make strokes here, it'll attempt to find the edges and you just go through and paint your image. There we go. And that did a pretty good job. I can go ahead and tell it that I wanted to refine it a bit. And let's go ahead and set this to actually show the alpha channel there. There it is, sort of a quick mask. Or we could turn that off and just see it over the transparent background. That looks good. I make sure I'm at full quality and I could start the RAM preview. Now, as it goes forward, sometimes if there's a significant change in the image, it might lose its place, and that's okay. You just go ahead and back up a frame till you're on the first frame that drops out and add a few more brush strokes to clean it up. That's looking fantastic. We're getting a nice clean edge there. Now, you notice there in that RAM preview, it stopped after a short period. That's because we're doing a full quality RAM preview with a very intensive effect. But the good news with After Effects CS5, those previous RAM caps are obliterated. So you can go ahead and stock up a lot more RAM in your computer and After Effects will see it. There are a couple of important options here. If we twirl this down, you'll see you have the ability to do decontamination. So it'll remove color spill. And you can go ahead and play with that if there's any spill from the background. You can also tell it to go ahead and compensate for motion blur. And one of the best things here is reduce chatter as it goes through. And you can even feather things out or smooth the edges a little bit. And that just sort of rounds the corners and helps clean it up. Now there we went a little too far. So let's just back that off a tad. But you see that's looking really good there. And I'll drop this down to half quality for a second and hit preview. So it previews a little bit more in. And you see that's doing a great job. There's lots of reasons for rotoscoping. Some of them include extracting a background to put something else back there. Obviously, the easiest way to do that is chroma key, but you're not always going to have that option. One of the things that I really like, though, is the ability to adjust the depth of field. So once I've rotoed out the footage, I'll put a second copy down below and tweak the blur. Let me show you that. Here we go. We'll go ahead and close this layer window and take a look at the footage here. There it is. Simply duplicate the layer, and on the lower copy, we'll remove the roto brush and just apply a blur effect. Effect blur, and I'd recommend the lens blur. This allows you to go ahead and bump that up just a little bit, tell it to repeat the edge pixel, and notice there without width. We could soften any distracting details in the background and really increase the perceived depth of field even if you're shooting with a smaller chip camera or just don't have the length in the lens. So a great effect, lots more uses for it. And you're going to see a ton of tutorials popping up here at Creative Cow teaching you how to use this effect. And we've got a bunch of new videos in the works for the Creative Cow Master Series. So be sure to stick around and check out some of the great new training that's going to be coming your way. For Creative Cow, my name's Rich Harrington.